Today, the government has published the Strategic Defence and Security Review. This has been a cross-government effort led by the requirement to deliver the sort of foreign policy this country needs. It includes the first thorough review of defence for 12 years. The SDSR has been undertaken in full consultation with the military chiefs and ministerial colleagues and I want to thank the whole department for all the hard work that's been done so far. We have undertaken this review at a difficult time for defence and for the country as a whole. Our armed forces are fighting courageously to bring security to Afghanistan. This mission is vital to our national security and to the safety of our citizens. Everything will be done to achieve operational success. There is still some way to go before the Afghans are ready to take responsibility for their own security. But we have the right strategy. Steady progress is being made and we can be proud of what our people are achieving. But as a nation, and in defence in particular, we must face up to some uncomfortable truths. The government has made clear our determination to address the unprecedented fiscal deficit we inherited. The interest we will have to pay next year on the back of the national debt is £47 billion, nearly £10 billion more than the entire annual defence budget, and we will get absolutely nothing for it. The deficit must be tackled. Every department has to make its own contribution, and the MOD is no exception. Nevertheless, because of the priority we are placing on our national security relative to other departments, Defence is making a modest contribution to the deficit reduction strategy. But we also have to deal with the existing unfunded liability in the defence budget to the tune of some £38 billion pounds over the next 10 years. In the last year of the previous government, this overspend increased by a record £3.3 billion pounds because tough decisions were repeatedly ducked. It is in the national interest that this situation be resolved and so change must come. Regrettably, the result means reductions in manpower across all three services and civilians. It is painful, but we have to make sacrifices to get the economy and the defence programme back on track. So the SDSR aims to bring defence plans, commitments and resources into balance. It supports our strategic requirements to maintain global reach, to live up to our responsibilities to our allies, to deter and contain those who threaten us and, where necessary, to intervene abroad. We have sought to set a path for the restructure of our forces over the next decade to 2020 and beyond to meet these requirements and to address the changing character of conflict. We will enhance intelligence gathering, command and control, unmanned technology, special forces and cyber capabilities. By 2020, the Navy's surface fleet will include 19 frigates and destroyers, including six new Type 45 destroyers. The new Type 26 frigates will soon follow. We will retain the Royal Marine Brigade and an effective amphibious capability. A carrier strike capability will be based on a single new operational carrier with the second kept at extended readiness as a contingency. We will fit a catapult and arrestor system to enable us to buy the carrier variant of the Joint Strike Fighter with a longer range and bigger payload. This will also increase our interoperability with our American and French allies. The Trident Force will provide the UK's continuous at sea deterrence and seven new adaptable astute hunter-killer submarines will provide force protection, global intelligence and strike capability. This will mean the decommissioning of HMS Ark Royal, four frigates, a B-class support ship and either HMS Ocean or HMS Illustrious. The Army will be structured around five multi-role brigades, each including reconnaissance, armoured mechanised and light infantry forces with supporting units of equipment and enablers. 
we will keep one brigade at high readiness available for an intervention operation and four in support to ensure the ability to sustain an enduring stabilization operation. This will mean reducing by one the number of deployable brigades, reducing our holdings of Challenger 2 battle tanks by around 40% and our heavy artillery by 35%. The RAF will be built around a fleet of two of the most capable fast jets anywhere in the world, a modernized multi-role Typhoon fleet and the Joint Strike Fighter. The strategic air transport fleet will be upgraded with the addition of A400M and A330 aircraft as well as an increased C-17 fleet. In the transition period we will retain a reduced tornado fleet but remove Harrier from service in 2011. The reserve forces will be reviewed over the next six months in order to ensure they are properly structured for the type of conflict we envisage in the future. Critically, the SDSR marks the beginning of a process of regular defence reviews so that as the economy recovers, capabilities can continue to evolve to meet the threats to our country as they change. This adaptable posture means we can maintain skills, training and reduced levels of certain types of equipment, but with the ability to regenerate military capability should the strategic need arise. Full details of the SDSR will be available on the defence intranet. I know that this process will be unsettling and I very much regret the uncertainty that comes with it. We need to put ourselves on a sound footing with both budgetary discipline and strategic direction. I know that all who work in defence are passionate advocates of what we do to keep this country safe. There is a hard road ahead, but at the end of the process, Britain will have the capabilities it needs to keep our people safe, to live up to our responsibilities to our allies and friends, and our national interests will be more secure. Thank you.